what is up and welcome or welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Danielle and I am a hairstylist I do a lot of hairstylist related videos such as like days of my life weeks of my life and then special videos like this one where I talk about the reality of it and like the behind the scenes I guess you could say so for today's video as you can already tell from the title I'm gonna be talking about the differences between being a commission stylist and being a booth rental stylist. I know I get a ton of questions about this um, as far as like money goes and what the differences are. So if you are interested in learning about the comparison between the two, then just keep on watching. So for those of you that do not know me, I have been a stylist for about over a year now. I had gone to hair school at Tony and Guy back in February of 2020 right before COVID hit, that was so much fun. But I did document a lot of that. So if you do wanna see my cosmetology school journey, then go back to some of my old videos. There's quite a few. But yeah, so once I graduated from Tony and Guy in October of 2020, I immediately went to a salon to become a commission stylist. Now this isn't going to be what happens for everyone. I know that some people have their opinions on being a commission stylist right out of hair school and they also have opinions on being like an assistant out of school. But personally, I just felt like I was ready to be a commission stylist. I didn't really want to assist anyone. They didn't really have an assistance position at the salon that I wanted to work at. And they basically were like, if you think you're ready, like I'm more than happy to have you being a commission stylist. And I just, you know, felt like I was ready. So that is what I did. But if you're one of those who don't feel comfortable, definitely look out for salons that have assistant positions or even like being a receptionist for a few months to kind of understand how the salon works. It's totally up to you. You make your own decisions. But again, I just really wanted to be a commission stylist right out of school, so that is what I did. And some of you may be thinking, what the heck is a commission stylist? Some of you may be thinking, what does that entail? And I'm going to tell you. So as far as the state of Rhode Island goes, you actually have to be a commission stylist for a full year before you can rent. I'm not really sure how other states work, but I know that that's just Rhode Island. And don't get me wrong, you can be a commission stylist for however long you want. There's no rule that says once your year comes up, you need to start renting. There are some stylists at my salon that have been doing it for like over five years and still rent. So trust me, you don't have to rent right away. So yes, I was a commission stylist for the full year before I started to rent. So I have quite a bit of knowledge on <laughs> how it all goes down. So the first thing to know about being a commission stylist is knowing your percentages. Every salon is going to be different. So my salon was 46.54. So I got 46% of all of the profit and the salon was getting 54%. I feel like most salons are 60-40 or 50-50. Some might even be 30-70. So definitely make sure you know the percentages and it's also really important to know the salon's prices because if you're going into a salon that has a commission percentage of 30 70 and their prices really aren't that high or reasonable you're probably not going to make out very well because think about it you're only getting 30 percent of what you're making plus tips so keep that in mind but I felt as though that $46.54 was really reasonable considering the salon's prices. So I was totally okay with that. So yes, really quickly, just to do one more example. If you come in and your service is $100, I would be making $46 of that. And then... If they tipped 20%, that would be an extra $20. So you would be making $66 total. I don't even think there was a service that was $100, like even. <laughs> but 
just an example so you guys understand. Another thing that gets put into consideration with money is product. So my salon does sell product. We usually sell mainly R & Co. We've recently upgraded to Olaplex and the new L'Oreal Professional line. So when I was doing commission, we made 10% of all of the sales which really wasn't a whole lot but it definitely is reasonable because it's just product that you're selling you're not really you know doing anything you're just helping the salon sell the product but yes make sure you ask if you get a commission for that as well and yeah that's pretty much it as far as money goes but now for everything except money that needs to be put into consideration. So when you are a commission stylist, you obviously do not have to pay for your chair. Your chair is free because you're not making 100% of your profit. You are making less of a percentage. So with that being said, you also do not have to pay for any of your product. You do have to pay for your tools, but no product. So my salon uses all Redken products, Redken Shades EQ, Redken Flash Lift, Redken Chromatics, like that's pretty much all we use at the salon, but it's beneficial because you don't have to buy any of it. So that's also why you're only getting partial commission as opposed to 100% because all of the product is given to you. There were some circumstances where since a lot of the people that were commission stylists started to become renters we weren't getting as much product because we didn't feel as though we needed as much sometimes it was a good thing sometimes it wasn't because god forbid you had someone coming in and it was like a fashion color and the salon didn't have it we were able to go to salon centric to buy a product and then the owner of the salon would just Venmo you however much you needed to spend as salon centric. So that was really nice. I never went like out of my way to grab a ton of stuff. Like I think I only went to salon centric maybe four or five times when I was a commission stylist to get like one bottle of Shades EQ one bottle of a fashion color maybe like a bottle of a permanent color but other than that the salon did have everything and then another main thing to also keep into consideration is when you are a commission stylist you really don't have to deal with the business side of being a hairstylist pretty much the owner does everything for you answers messages answers phone calls deals with the appointment bookings deals with if a client is not happy deals with no shows and cancellations and literally just being a commission stylist you don't have to deal with any of that so being a commission stylist definitely has its benefits as far as like the customer service business side goes but all in all when you are a booth renter you do make more money let's be honest so now that i covered pretty much everything for being a commission stylist i'm now going to talk about being a booth renter because that is like the main topic of today so i just started booth renting the beginning of november so it's been over a month i know you're probably thinking oh my god you've only been a renter for a month you have no experience but honestly i pretty much have learned it all within this one month i remember when the summer was happening and I was like, oh my god, like, I want to rent so bad. The summer is so busy. Like, why can't I rent? And I was so upset because I had to wait a full year. So, had to wait until October. But then I had such a big decision to make because I was like, you know what? It's October now. Like, summer's over. A lot of my clients are away at school. A lot of my clients are going back to their hometown because they just visit Rhode Island for the summer I was like so I don't know like I was very very indecisive about making this decision I was really set on waiting until the following summer but I convinced myself as well as others convincing me that I should start pretty much now because holiday season is so busy and they weren't lying <laughs> I am so busy 
for this month of December before Christmas and even after Christmas but yeah so basically how renting works is that it is literally your own business like no one's doing anything for you no one's helping you unless you have an accountant <laughs> you're literally doing it all on your own so I remember I had this like little tiny notebook and I basically wrote a to-do list of every single thing I needed to do before I could rent and I know it off of the top of my head so the first thing I had to do was get insurance it's not something you technically need but it's something you should have because god forbid you burn old sally's scalp by accident i don't know and she tries to sue you you should have some type of insurance so i had to get liability insurance which was 259 for the year so not really bad at all and then the next step i had to do was go to the bank and open up a separate account because you're the one that is getting all of the money the full 100 percent so you need to make sure you have a safe and separate account to put all of that money into if you really wanted to you could have it transferred into your normal personal savings or your personal checking but i didn't want to do that whatsoever because i wanted to make sure i was keeping track of the money i was making i had enough put aside for taxes just stuff like that so went to the bank opened up a separate account got a new card so that was awesome and then the third step i needed to do was make my website so you do need to have your own website when i was a commission stylist i obviously didn't have my own website because my website was my salon's website but for renting you do need to have your own so i did go through gloss genius i'm pretty sure that's like what 70 percent of all hairstylists use people also use square they use vagaro i'm trying to think of what else i can't think off the top of my head but i use gloss genius it is amazing it's only like 24 dollars that was perfect for me and it is just so easy i actually loved making my website you can customize it the way you want it you can add all of your individual services there's even like an i card on each service to explain what it is so that your clients know it was just amazing i loved making my website and all of my clients say that it's so easy so definitely recommend gloss genius if you are becoming a renter and then the fourth thing on the list was getting my license so my boss actually had sent me like the link of how to do it and i think it was like 170 or maybe 130 i don't even know it was i think it was 130 to send into the mail so that i could get like my paper license showing that i'm a renter so i had to do that and then the final thing that i really needed to do was just buy all of my product and i feel like that is like the number one thing renters need to know is you need to buy all of your product like all of it <laughs> gloves foils developers color lightener like you need to buy it all i want to say the first ever trip that i made to salon centric before i started renting was like six hundred dollars I did go a little above and beyond because I really wasn't sure what to expect with what to buy. Um, I know that I bought like two bags of lightener. I bought at least like 35 Redken Shades EQ bottles. I bought like 15 permanent colors for the grays. I bought a ton of developers and it ended up coming out to pretty much almost six hundred dollars but it lasted the whole month plus some so it was worth it to just get a bunch of stuff and now i feel like every other time i go to salon centric it's not nearly as much as six hundred dollars because i pretty much 
have a lot of this stuff and whatever I end up using I just grab an extra so I feel like typically it's like a monthly trip to salon centric is what I would say unless you forgot something and had to go pick it up quick which happened to me like the second week of me renting because I was like oh no I forgot this so I had to go and it was like $20 maybe but yes that is like the number one thing to keep in mind that you need 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 to buy your own product and then this also goes into account with opening up your new account because you want to make sure you are getting a separate debit card for that account so that in times when you do go to salon centric or anything you're buying for your business you want to put on that debit card so that it goes into your bank statement and you can write it off in taxes because with being a business owner you need to have an accountant who will help you do your taxes because you're not really getting a paycheck anymore you're getting all of the money so the accountant needs to keep track of all of the money that you've earned plus what you're buying so you can write it off and then at the end of each quarter she will let you know how much you owe in taxes because usually when you're a commission stylist I was just getting a weekly paycheck with taxes already taken out but that's not the case for being a renter so you really need to stay organized and keep track of everything that you do there's also an app called QuickBooks that will help you as well but because i have an accountant and she uses quickbooks for her business i don't even bother getting the app because she just does it all for me and i pay her instead of paying for the quickbooks app so totally up to you how you do it but yes so that's like the main thing to worry about is just keeping track of everything you buy and receive and organizing what you're buying. I also did mention um, paying quarterly taxes. You can either pay quarterly taxes or yearly taxes. I highly suggest not paying yearly taxes because it is going to be so much money that you're gonna be like, holy crap, I just had a huge chunk taken out. As opposed to if you do quarterly, it's like, breaking it up a little bit so you're not paying a full chunk at the end of the year but again your decision totally up to you but yeah and then also as far as renting you are dealing with the customer service part of the business so you have to answer all of the emails all of the texts all of the calls you have to handle all of the issues with clients. You need to keep track of your website. So I actually changed one of my settings on my website so that I can approve or deny a requested appointment. And it's not so much like deny because I don't want to do their hair. It's more so like, say God forbid, I didn't have anyone booking for a day and someone booked a blowout like the last hour when I have nobody before them I would deny it and then text them and be like is there any way you could come a different day just because I have no one before you and I don't really feel like coming in at four o'clock <laughs> to do a blowout like you know what I mean so I did change that setting but with changing that setting I need to really keep track of my website so that I can make sure I approve it or deny it. Another reason why I love Gloss Genius too is because no matter what is happening, I always get a text. Whether it's a new booking request or if I got a message or an email, if someone cancels, like I always get a text. And I'll, it literally always says the same thing I'll show you. They'll say, good afternoon or good morning, Danielle. It's Gloss. Just received an appointment request from blah, blah, blah. Just wanted to let you know that blah, blah, blah sent you the following message on your website <laughs> and so on and so on. So I love that my app texts me because it keeps me more organized and aware of what's happening. But yes, all in all, renting your own chair is you dealing with everything and then the last thing I wanted to say is that for our rent we do weekly pays 
So some salons might be different. It might be like monthly, daily, weekly. It all depends. But for my individual chair, I have to pay $275 every Friday. Some of you might think that's absolutely absurd. Some of you might think that's cheap. Some of you think that's reasonable. I personally think it is very reasonable because of the location my salon is in, how big it is, all of the expenses that my owner has to go through. So I totally think it's reasonable. And honestly, if you think about it, when I do a full highlight service, which includes like a haircut it also includes the toning process and the products that i use i charge 230 and then if they tip me 20 percent it ends up being 276 so there you go that one person is my rent for the week and then i'm making everything else pretty much oh and one last thing before i'm done I wanted to share this little tiny thing that I wrote in my handy dandy business notebook. So this is just me being extra crazy and extra organized. This is more of like a tip for upcoming renters or even if you are a renter and don't do this. So I actually listed out all of the individual products that I buy when I go to Salon Centric. So we have Redken Flash Lift, which is the lightener, the Shades EQ toners, Redken Chromatic Permanent Line, the processing solution, and then all of the developers and stuff like that. So for Redken Flash Lift, I wrote that it has 32 ounces in it, and the total cost is $38.07. So did a little bit of math, and each ounce that I use is $1.00. And 19 cents and I did that for every single product that I use that way it helps you keep track of how much product you're actually using and the money that goes into it so that you can know how much to charge for each service so that you know that you're making enough profit so yeah just wanted to give you that little tip but I'm pretty sure I went over everything that I wanted to go over if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to comment them down below and I will definitely answer them for you guys. But I really hope this helped some of you and I hope you guys enjoyed. If you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys!